Aldehyde slab, we're doing Grignard reaction, which is a reaction that converts aldehyde or ketones into secondary or tertiary alcohols. What you can see on the screen is a small selection of the large number of reagents you can use with Grignard reactions and the different products it can form. This week, we're going to be preparing our own Grignard reagent called methyl magnesium iodide, and we'll be performing a reaction with benzoline. In this reaction, there's two possible outcomes that are both diastereomers, so we can either get the RSSR version or the RRSS version of 1,2-diphenyl 1,2-propane diol. After we perform the reaction, we'll perform PLC and obtain a melting point. Some of the special considerations to make in this lab is that our methyl magnesium iodide is going to be really moisture sensitive, really air sensitive, and flammable. So make sure you're only using the hood and you're keeping your drying tube on top. And so to start the experiment, we'll need a 25 milliliter round bottom flask that is as dry as it can be. So we need about 100 milligrams of our magnesium strip. I'm going to go and cut off some pieces. You may notice in your magnesium that it has some darker spots or some discoloration. That's some oxidation happening. We will sand that off as best we can. But let's go ahead and get our initial 100 milligrams. That's a pretty good size. We'll let it settle for a second. Um, we'll also get a new measurement once we sand it down and cut it into its strips. All right, so I've cleaned off any discoloration that was on there. And now we're going to cut it into fourth of an inch strips or so. The smaller the strips, the and the more clean it is, the better results you'll get. All right, we'll go with 116 milligrams, and we'll go ahead and add that to our round bottom flask. All right, next we're going to add our diethyl ether, but first we want to go ahead and prepare our drying tubes so that we can put it straight on after we get the diethyl ether in there. All right, so pre preparing our drying tube, we're going to need some cotton at the bottom, cotton at the top, and we're going to fill with calcium chloride in between. So go ahead and tear a decent sized piece of cotton. So we've got the cotton in there. I'm going to use a wood applicator stick to just help push it down. You just want it to, you don't want to push it so far down that it gets like stuck in here, but you want it to settle at the bottom. And we put the calcium chloride in, that will help weigh it down as well. But there we go, leave it there. Now we're going to load in some calcium chloride, probably about, fill it to about here or so. Um, if you have the granulated calcium chloride, that may work a little better. We just have the powder right now. Um, but you want to kind of loosely pack it so it's not. So it still lets some air through, but just not the moisture. All right, so we got our calcium chloride powder in there. If you have the granulated, I'd fill it to about here or so, but since we have the powder, I'm just gonna fill it to here. And now we'll take another piece of cotton and plug the top. All right, so I had to restart the experiment. Um, it's a new flask, same drying tube. I cut up some new and cleaned some new magnesium. This time it was 97 milligrams after being cleaned but everything else is going to remain the same, and I'll join you when we get the methyl iodide in. So now we're going to add dropwise our methyl iodide, and we should see a reaction begin to form. Make sure you add your drying tube, and we'll get a stir rod in there. Alright, and begin to see a little bit of bubbling and a little bit of cloudiness to the solution. So we're going to let this run for a little bit and try and let it fully react. All right, so we're getting quite a vigorous reaction now. We're going to let it subside before we add our benzoin. Alright, looks like our reaction subsided, so we're going to get 
our benzoin dissolved in some dichloromethane and added to the solution. All right, so here I have 255 milligrams of the benzoin dissolved in five mils of DCN. We're gonna add it to the solution slowly and with stirring. We should get a reaction forming right away. We'll add on a water condenser and put the drying tube back on and then we'll begin our reflux. Now you'll get our condenser on there. You don't need to attach it to water. You can just put it on and then put the drawing tube at the top. Let me zoom out and show you what setup we have. So we have the flask on the bottom, condenser, and drying tube. Like I said, you don't need to set up to water. Okay, so now we're going to put a sand bath underneath it so that we can heat it up. All right, and we want about the lowest setting possible on the temperature, so I'm just going to turn it to a one. DC and diethylene are low boiling points, so we don't need much heat, and we're just going to look for a light drip back from the edge of the condenser. If it starts going up too high, take it out, but it, we should just see some condensation, which looks like it may already be starting to form right on the edge of the bottom of the condenser there. And we'll let it reflux for about 15 minutes. All right, now that it's been about 15 minutes, I'm going to turn off the heat um, and we will begin to work up our solution. All right, so I'm gonna take off our water condenser and bring our drawing tube back to here. And now I'm going to slowly acidify it with three milliliters of three molar hydrochloric acid, and we're gonna let it stir while it's keep, keep it stirring while it's going. Next, we'll get a piece of pH, pH paper to test to make sure we're at an acidic solution. All right, so we got a purplish red solution, so we are in acidic conditions. Next we will extract this. All right, so now we got our mixture, we're gonna pour it into the separatory funnel, make sure it's closed. All right, and we got five mils of DCM we're gonna to use to help transfer the solution. We're now going to add about 10 mils of distilled water. All right, so we do see the formation of three layers in this. It's likely that our bottom layer is just some diethyl ether. So we will add a drop of DCM to figure out which layer is our DCM layer. Middle layer is our DCM layer. We'll go ahead and get this shaken up and we'll collect our DCM. All right, so first we're gonna drain off this bottom layer, set it to the side, and we'll get our DCM layer, which is this yellow layer. All right, so now we're gonna add another 10 mils of dichloromethane and re-extract. All right, so our DCM layer is in the bottom, and we're going to combine that with our previous DCM extract. So now that we have our dichloromethane extracts, we are going to dry them with some sodium sulfate and then transfer it to a beaker to evaporate. All right, so now we will decant our solution into a beaker, trying to leave all the sodium sulfate behind. Alright, looks good. Alright, so now we'll just evaporate this, put in the beaker of warm water to get our crude product. So now we're going to redissolve this, filter it, and recrystallize. Before we do our recrystallization, I'm going to get a little bit of it in a glass vial to save for TLC. So I'm going to try and make sure I get some solid. Maybe easier said than done. We won't need much, just enough for to spot a TLC plate. Just 
just going to kind of smear on the side here. So I'll put this to the side and we will use this for our TLC plate. I've also used a column pipette to make a filter by just stuffing some cotton down in the pipette and we'll use that to filter off our sample. Alright, so I have a little over 20 mils of hexanes. We're going to add it to this to our beaker and next we will heat it up. So we're going to heat our solution here. Only turn it to about two and we're going to use this stick to try and break up any of the solids that are in there. Now we are starting to get some boiling. Um, we do have a bit of solid here in the middle that I'm trying to get dissolved. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and transfer it to our puppet. Once we let it filter all the way through, we're going to let it stand in the beaker for about 10 minutes undisturbed to cool the room temperature and recrystallize our product. Alright, so I don't know if it'll focus. There you go. Um, we do have some nice crystals at the bottom. We're now going to collect them on a, with a Buchner funnel and then TLC and melting point. Alright, so a lot of our crystals are stuck here at the bottom, so I'm going to use a spatula to help scrape some of it up. I've also chilled some hexane so they're ice cold and we're going to use that to help transfer as well as wash our solid and I'm going to use it to wet our paper to start with. Alright, I'm going to start without using vacuum. We'll see if we need to use a vacuum or not. We're looking for an off-white to white solid. If there's some impurities and it's color we can recrystallize it again. Hook of the vacuum once this drips through just to help dry it. Alright, so I've let our product dry. Show you its appearance. It definitely it is some nice crystals, but it's definitely still got a lot of yellow in it. You have two weeks to perform this lab, so you have plenty of time. I would recommend recrystallizing this again. That yellow means there's some impurities. Um, there is a lot of white in there as well, but that yellow means there's definitely some impurities. I'm running low on time, so I'm just going to go ahead and run with this, but if you have the time, definitely recrystallize to get a better result. Alright, so we developed a TLC plate in 2 to 1 hexane to ethyl acetate. If you need a reminder on how to do a TLC, you can look at our TLC video for the 361 lab. But we spotted from left to right our benzoin, our crude product, and our recrystallized product. We then looked at it with UV and there was a couple spots we could see. Um, under UV we were able to see, now that we've treated it, it's not showing, it's showing up a little bit there. The benzoin did smear a little bit and curve up when we put it in the plate, but it didn't do it too bad. And then we have our two spots here. We'll get our, we'll go ahead and mark those down. Alright, so it's actually just getting rid of the silicon dioxide, so we won't mark those down as well. <laughs> um, but we will record the RF values for those and then compare them to the benzoin. So we definitely got a different product. There may be a little bit of benzoin in our product still, but it's at a different level. So our solvent traveled 2.5 eight centimeters. So I just make a, made a line where the starting one was, where the start was. All right, so our solvent again went 2.8. Our recrystallized product went 1.3. Our crude product 
went 1.2 and the middle of the blob at the top far benzoin is at 1.7. So next we'll get a melting point and compare it to the known melting points. Melting point was 103 to 104 so that means we formed the RSSR12 diphenyl 12 propanediol diastereomer.